Welcome everyone to another episode of Empowering People with Energy, where we join you today on the beautiful campus of UTEP with our first ever community interview. Dr. Heather Wilson, president of UTEP, <laughs> stay with us. Dr. Wilson, we are so happy to have you on our podcast, Empowering People with Energy. We have a lot to talk about today and our partnership is something I know we're both excited about. But before we get to that, I wanna talk about who is Heather Wilson? You know, there's so much been written about you. We know a lot about you, but... What you mean is, who the heck do you think you are, right? <laughs> yeah, who the heck do you think you are? No, what I mean is that I know that there are a lot of people that are interested in knowing other stories about you. But first of all, what drew you here? What drew you to yeah. El Paso? What pulled you here? And mm -hmm. um, how are you finding it so far? Well, our family home is in Albuquerque. And so so uh, we knew we wanted to get back west to the Pecos and public higher education. And um, UTEP is a wonderful fit for us. Or as my as my husband says, when they, after, you know, the, the head hunter called, and, and uh, asked if I was interested in this when I was back east being Secretary of the Air Force. My husband pointed out that UTEP is closer to Hatch Green Chillery than Albuquerque <laughs> is, and that was a priority. That's so, important. That was really important. So, so it was good, and, and it's the mission. This is a public, comprehensive research university that changes lives, and that's why I'm here. It's the mission. And um, I really appreciated when I came, when I wasn't even yet here and I got a call from you <laughs> to tell me what a wonderful place it would be and how welcoming everybody was. So thank yeah. you for that. Everybody, the, the other thing, uh, you know, we, 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 of course, I didn't expect a global pandemic in my no, first year on the job. Nor did I. <laughs> but but um, uh, El Paso is a really friendly place and a very family oriented place. And, and it's been a really nice place to be. And I would say we're nicer than most. I was pleased to attend a com uh, concert on your campus, Ricky Martin and Enrique. <laughs> and everyone was so ah. concerned that, oh my gosh, you know, they just had that other awful tragedy happen. Mm. And I said, it mm. won't happen there. People were so polite. All the students, lo siento, excuse me. It was such a gracious time. So I think you're absolutely right. We have something unique here. And you were alluding to the fact, the special mission of UTEP, yeah. and you've talked yeah. a lot about it, but tell our listeners, why is this university different than others and why is its mission, I believe it is, just bigger? Yeah, so we have 20, almost 25,000 students here and we are a class one research university, which means we're in the top 5% of research universities in America. Well, we're, we're in the top wow. five universities in the state of Texas. Um, but we are also a community engaged university. And among, so there's 200 or so class one research universities in the country. We are the only one that continues its open access mission. In other words, we meet students where they are. We don't say, well, you're not good enough right. to join us. Um, and I think higher education in America took a terrible wrong turn 30 years ago when mm -hmm. they started saying, I mean, if you, if would people think that you were a great <laughs> utility if you said, well, we only serve 10% of our customers, no, they right? No, not. <laughs> that, that doesn't make any sense. No. But that's where a lot of higher education went. Mm -hmm. UTEP refused and, and said, and we have retention rates that are higher than the average selective university wow. because we meet students where they are and help them become better versions of themselves. We understand the barriers that a lot of our students face. Right. We could talk about that all day long because for some reason we got all enamored by saying only a few people can come here and that was really a sign of excellence. Yeah. But what I think you're saying yeah. is that everyone has a chance at excellence. We just have to give it to them. Well, we want to be judged not by whom we exclude, yes. but by whom we include and their success. So this is one of the universities that educates students to a high standard and then changes their lives and changes the lives mm -hmm. of their families, their children, their grandchildren, because still the best path to the middle class in America is through education. No question, no doubt about that. And when people ask me what makes this region different, I talk about this university and the human capital and the bigger role you play. And yeah. I think our agreement today is just a symbol of that. Yeah. It's a four part agreement. We're both excited about the potential embedded in it. And I just like to go over those four parts of that sure. agreement. Ready to go? Ready to go. 
So the first part, and I know something that you're really passionate about, is called the arm of community, this yeah. public partner private ship, uh, partnerships, and how we work together to make that region better. Why don't yeah. you tell our listeners a little bit what that means to you? One of the things that, that UTEP does is try to reach out and connect with K-12 education, right. and we do that best in partnership. And here, mm -hmm. this is a good example. Kids need to know what the opportunities are out there for them. Mm -hmm. And particularly when it comes to science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and to be able to, to dream a little bit. I mean, you know, most kids think that, that electricity mm -hmm. is what happens when you <laughs> flip the switch, right? Yeah, just comes on. Right. Um, but they, we need to connect with them and inspire them. And so that connection to K-12 education and expanding opportunities and creating a college-going culture, or at least, it, you know, we've talked about this, but, but 90% of the jobs created since 2008 mm -hmm. require some kind of training, wow. certification, or education after high school. The world has changed, and so we need to reach kids and have them be curious about what opportunities are out there for them. And that's what the community partnership does. Well, we talk a lot about curiosity and how it just drives all innovation. And you and I have both worked on a strategic plan recently, and we mm -hmm. so appreciated when you had finished yours and you came over and helped us talk about ours. And really embedded in both of those plans was this idea of just expanding what's possible and expanding yeah. what's possible for the individual, what's possible for our community, what's possible for our region. And we both said we have to reach people earlier and earlier. And I think yeah. that's what this community part of this agreement helps us do. I think so, and, and we're, we tend to be better at doing that when we do it in partnership. I mean, there are things that we can do around science, math, computing with kids, but I think it becomes more relevant to them if they right. can see, huh, this is one of the largest employers in the region. Maybe there's something there that would be and fun to do. One of the best employers in the region, <laughs> yes. We've been the lucky recipient of hundreds of UTEP grads, and I think yeah, it's made us stronger, and we take great pride in, in the minors, and uh, <laughs> we'll have a lively discussion about it most of our executive meetings. <laughs> the next pillar after community is curriculum, and I know that's yeah. something near and dear to your heart, and mm -hmm. you've talked a lot about that. What? How do you imagine this curriculum piece of our MOU working so together? Here's the great thing. Um, if we partner with you on things like our senior course in advanced power, if we take someone from who's an expert in your industry, bring them into the classroom, review the curriculum, help mm -hmm. us with some teaching, it's kind of a hostage exchange. Um, <laughs> and both of the hostages want to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it, it makes our curriculum better and more relevant for mm -hmm. those who are going into the power industry because your engineers come with the latest of what's really going mm -hmm. on in the industry. And so making the curriculum relevant is best done in partnership with industry. Yeah. And so, 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 and that's, that's not as much true in the you know, freshman, sophomore, maybe junior mm -hmm. courses. But when you get to the point where an engineer has decided they're gonna go into the power industry, we want them to have the best curriculum. Mm -hmm. And that's best developed in partnership with those who are who are out there and doing the work. And I like what you said about exchange because as we walked <laughs> <Hostage> around <exchange. laughs> no, not hostage, really. when we walked around campus this morning, we we just know our different demographics. Yeah. Here we have a lot of young people doing yep. a lot of different things and we're really focused and our average age is almost 50. So mm -hmm. we're having that experience meet this new level of innovation and mm -hmm. bringing that that conversation together. I'm I'm so, I'm so excited about that. Well, it's also, you know, it goes both ways. Uh, and and probably when we were when we were youngsters and just starting out our career, <laughs> we found some people yes. who were the old hands who mm -hmm. just knew how stuff worked, right? Yes. And that mentorship mm -hmm. um, is really important for our students. And so creating opportunities for them to meet people who spent their life's work mm -hmm. in an industry they're just about to join, there's nothing better than that kind of stewardship and mentorship. And let's face it, it's now a responsibility we have um, to, to help the next generation. And I know we, we both feel that, and that brings us to our, our really our third component. We have the community, we have the curriculum, and the thing I'm really passionate about, and I hope our customers are, the research component. Yeah. Yeah. Um, El Paso Electric doesn't have the capital, and our customers don't want to pay for a whole research, mm -hmm. but you have unbelievable research. I was yeah. blown away when people asked me, what's the biggest surprise here? It's a human capital. 
and the research going on here is phenomenal. You've gotten a lot of press about it recently. What do you think that research component can bring to our community? Well, UTEP is is a is a public research university, and we're in the top five percent when it comes to research in the country. Say that again. We're we in the are... top five percent <laughs> in the country when it comes to research. <laughs> when it comes to research. And so, so um, one of our responsibilities is to advance discovery and its application. And so, mm -hmm. so um, use inspired discovery mm -hmm. is something we can do best in partnership with others. So, what are the you know there's there, the pace of change is accelerating, and that's very true in your industry. How do we partner together to say, all right, what are the biggest challenges? What are the biggest opportunities? And is there a basic and early stage applied research that can be done at the university here? And in some ways, make the university itself with some of these, one of the things I find most exciting about this is the university as a test bed for some of the things mm -hmm. that you're wanting to potentially put into the community. because. I can do things here that it might be a problem to do out in somebody's neighborhood, and so, <laughs> and and yes. we'll be tolerant of it. <laughs> yes. um, uh, and our, you know, our students are always doing things that um, that are a little bit, you know, um, outside the lines. And so, so we're willing to try to do some of those things and see if they work. And see if they work. There's never been a more exciting time in energy, and you and yeah. I talked about it earlier, that a lot of the industries had their real trajectory earlier, but mm -hmm. we're seeing right now the foundation of unbelievable change, mm -hmm. and whether it's storage or energy efficiency technology, just this mm -hmm. idea that policy and technology and culture have come together mm -hmm. to provide a great opportunity. So I think it's the right time for our agreement. We're really looking forward to what that research shows that we can give to our communities and how we can propel that change forward faster. Well, I think there's a lot that can be done. I mean, UTEP is an expert in the area of climate science and clean mm -hmm. energy. We also have tremendous expertise in, the, in, in computing uh, as well as in electrical engineering. And so this is going to be an exciting time. And one of the things I like is the sponsorship of capstone projects. So pretty much all of our engineers have to do a senior design project. It's where you get to do something hard that hasn't been done before in a team uh, with different people. All of those complex things that happen in the real world. And, um, and uh, some of those capstone projects can be some of, the, you know, some of the things that help advance in the directions you want to go or where the industry is going, but also help our students. Right. And so, so we're going to advance knowledge in its application. And you're passionate about research now. Heather told me earlier she was fascinated with locks, and we <laughs> we talked about think how locks have when changed. When I was a kid, <laughs> I did. think about locks. You know, I have a Tesla. We don't even have a lock. I have a little card that I mean, my app starts the car, and you talked about it earlier. <laughs> Why don't you tell our listeners your lock story? I love that story. So we were talking about innovation and how things have changed so rapidly. So when I was in high school, I I was interested in a lot of things, but one of them was locks, and not just locks, but picking locks. But I, I picking locks. I never. I never went to jail. Okay. Um, well, you knew somebody did. Well, well the guy who taught me this ended up kind of in trouble a couple of times. We all but, have those friends. Yeah, um, it's a choice. But uh, so I, I, locks are interesting mechanisms. You know, they're all around us, and they're a very simple thing, but they're very common, and people don't think about them all that much. But you think about this: the Romans invented a lock about 2,000 years ago, and for 2,000 years, right, they pretty much didn't change. But if you, and if you think of the lock on your car when you first bought a car, um, mm -hmm. it was, you had a key and mm -hmm. you turned it. Now you push a button and it opens. Think about, think about the locks on the doors of the last hotel you went to right. or Motel 6, An app. right? You swipe a card and the door opens. Or you even, don't even swipe it, you, you get it closed. <laughs> you have an app so, now. <laughs> so what, when I was in high school with just a, you know, an apprenticeship, I could have become a locksmith. It was a fairly <laughs> simple thing, wow. right? Mm -hmm. But today, you need computer scientists and material scientists and electrical engineers right. um, uh, and mechanical engineers to open a door. Right. Innovation has accelerated. And what was good enough for our parents is not good enough for our kids mm -hmm. and our grandchildren, which is why they need more education than we needed.
So I could have yes. become a locksmith. <laughs> you could have become a locksmith, but you would have missed all this. I know. You wouldn't want to miss this. I know. I, I will say that when we think about our industry, we haven't had that trajectory, but we are poised to have it. And mm -hmm. and I think about my app. I unlock my cars with my app. I go into a hotel with an app. So I think but we're going to see this. that. think about this. So I, my, my family were aviators. My grandfather flew in the First World War and the right. Second World War. My dad was a pilot, and, and uh, obviously I went into the Air Force. The we put a man on the moon right. with less computing power than, we have in our than phone. the phone in your pocket. <laughs> Say that again. We put somebody on the moon with less computing power than the phone in our pocket. Yeah. That's how fast things have changed. And, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to change. So we need to prepare people to drive that change right. and be able to adapt to that change. Well, that brings us to our last component of our agreement together. Uh, and it's the human capital. I know that's the the area that you're yeah. the most passionate about. Yeah. So we, we've talked about the curriculum, that involves human capital, the research, mm -hmm. that involves human capital, and the community portion, that involves human capital. How do you see us really focusing on, together in our partnership, mm -hmm. to really elevate human capital? We develop people and talent. And you know, here, just at UTEP, we have 4,400 engineering students. We've got another 3,000 wow. science students. We're glad about that. Um, another two or three thousand in the business school. So this is a university that's roots are in engineering and science. Mm -hmm. and, and our mission is to develop people to serve the community in which we live. And that means understanding what industry needs and making sure we're developing and opening pathways for our students. The best way to do that is in partnership. And so mm -hmm. things like this, internships, co-ops, uh, most of our students uh, are working their way through school. Think about this, half of our students are the first in their families to go to college, right? <laughs> As <too>. am I. <laughs> right? Two thirds of our students are coming from families making less than $37,000 mm -hmm. a year. They're working their way through school. When we create partnerships, it opens opportunities for them to work their way through school and work their way into a better life. And so we do that with partnerships with the industry we serve. We talk a lot about being hungry, humble, and smart, and I think that kind of student, I think, is hungry, humble, and smart, and I think you've talked a lot about that. You've had a, a lot of jobs, and you've told me that this is one of your favorite. I like being, that. so being the president of a university is a complicated job, but I'm easily bored. And so. <laughs> I hear that. Fly airplane. I said, I try not to feel like, you know, intimidated, but you, you've done a lot of things. So I love the complexity of it. I love the students, but mostly I love the mission mm -hmm. and of public higher education. If we, if we get this right, America will succeed. If we don't, if we still have only half of our kids going mm -hmm. on to get some kind of meaningful post high school credential, we will fail our country and our community. And that's why I'm here. Well, and that's a big mission. If we don't get this right in this moment, and you're not talking just about energy, which we're very excited about no, this I'm agreement. Talking about our, yeah. We're talking about our world. Like, yeah. We can't, no matter if we want, we can't leave half of our world behind. The world doesn't work that way. And Well, we're not going to be competitive. I no. mean, well, we're not, El Paso's workforce is actually the second, when you look at some college or above, mm -hmm. El Paso's workforce is actually the second most educated in Texas, mm -hmm. just behind Austin. Now, we've got to get more bachelor's degrees. We right. know that. And, but what matters now is talent. What mattered 100 years ago was access to natural resources. Right. Now what matters is talent. And we're not competing with Austin or San Antonio no. or Dallas. We're competing with Singapore and Munich and Oslo and Beijing. Mm -hmm. And so, so we need to develop talent to a very high level. And we have the raw material. We have the demographics. Our, our town is growing. Our families are growing. So we, we have a... It's, uh, I hope everyone's here, and this is a special moment for our region and the world, and yep. we're willing to play our part, and we think this partnership of community, of curriculum, of research, and of human capital can help propel that forward. Sounds great. Anything else you'd like to tell our listeners before we sign off today? We're in. <laughs> we're in. <laughs> Yay. I, you know, Dr. Heather Wilson, you know, I, I've just been so impressed. I'll watch you from afar. I'll watch you up close, and we're so excited to have had, had you as our first community interviewee on our show. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to this long partnership where we change the world together. 
So thank you again for joining us. My pleasure. And thank you, listeners. Please, if you have enjoyed our conversation, like us, give us a thumbs up, share us. And remember, we're on all platforms where social media can be found. And stay tuned for another episode next month of empowering people with your our energy and your energy. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. Stay with us, EPE and UTEP together. Go miners. Go miners. <laughs>